Welcome to the For Your Soul Podcast, a podcast for your soul. Welcome to the For Your Soul Podcast. I am your host, Milton Quintanilla, and thank you for joining me on today's episode. And today I'm going to be continuing with part three of my Theology Matters series with this with the topic of biblical theology. Okay? Now, if you haven't listened to my previous episodes, I encourage you to go back. I, I covered uh, basic introduction on what is theology, why Christians must study theology. And then in the second part, I covered systematic theology and why Christians Christians must study that as well. Now, today I'm going to be looking at biblical theology. I'm going to define biblical theology. What are the component? What are its components? And also, why must Christians study biblical theology? Okay, so let's begin. Biblical theology, by definition, helps us look at the big picture of the Bible by seeing the unfolding of redemptive history from Genesis to Revelation. It also helps us look at how doctrines presented. And the books of the Bible are fleshed out and connected to the overall picture. Now, where did biblical theology come from? Well, it was first coined by a German biblical scholar named J.P. Gabler in 1787, who called for a distinction between systematic and biblical theology. Now, if you heard my previous episode on systematic theology, systematic theology is defined as a particular it, it, it looks at different doctrines throughout the Bible and basically categorizes them in accordance to that particular doctrine. Now, the difference between biblical theology and systematic theology is that whereas systematic theology looks at a particular doctrine, biblical theology looks at how that doctrine is fleshed out. Okay, for example, angelology, which is the doctrine of angels. That is something that is found in systematic theology where it just looks at what the Bible has to say about angels. Whereas in biblical theology, it will look at how that doctrine of angels grow, ha, had developed throughout the Bible. You see, so in, in short, systematic theology is categorical, whereas biblical theology is more progressive. But either way, they both are important, important because they both derive from the word of God. All right. So I have I also have here some other definitions f- from biblical theology, which I got from a nice article from 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 Cro- Crossway, which I will link to the description. So D.A. Carson, who is the emeritus professor of New Testament at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School in Deerfield, Illinois, and also the founder, one of the co-founders of the Gospel Coalition, he defines biblical theology in this way, and I quote, Biblical theology seeks to uncover and articulate the unity of all the biblical texts taken together, resorting primarily to the categories of those texts themselves. So when it comes to Carson's definition of biblical theology, he looks at basically the big picture of the Bible, right, as to what it says about a particular text, but also how that text came about and the original context. So another professor by the name of Steve Wellam, who teaches at, who teaches Christian theology at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, he says that biblical theology, and I quote, contends to read the Bible as unified scripture is not just one interpretive option among others, but that which best corresponds to the nature of the text itself, given its divine inspiration. As such, biblical theology as a discipline not only provides the basis for how texts in one part of scripture relate to all other texts, but it also serves as the basis for an underpinning of all theologizing, end quote. And I will provide additional definitions in a moment. So moving on to the components of biblical theology, uh, there are multiple ones. Uh, it's multifaceted, but it's all linked together. Uh, for instance, the self-revelation of God, okay, the self-revelation of God, that is something that is taken into account in biblical theology. Now, a theologian by the name of Gerhard Voss, forgive me if I can pronounce it correctly, he defines biblical theology as, quote, that branch of exegetical theology which 
deals with the process of the self-revelation of God deposited in the Bible. And what I like about Voss's point here is that it centers on God's revelation in the Bible. And as we read the scriptures, we see this progressive revelation of God manifest, whether it's his covenants with his people, him speaking to the prophets, as well as his redemptive works and judgments. And biblical theology covers all that because as we, like I said, as, as, as we read the Bible, we learn more about God. And that's, and that's very, and that's a good thing for Christians to know because in doing so, we have this overview of God who is the same God today. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the same God who is present in the lives of his people today. And biblical theology provides a historical standpoint of the self-revelation of God that is relevant to our lives. Which is a good thing because that allows us to know him in accordance to his word. We don't have to worry about whether or not his word says one thing, but yet it doesn't apply to us now. No, like the same God of the Bible is the same God today. And therefore, that is a good thing because it allows us to, to know God rightly as opposed to coming to as opposed to coming to our own conclusions okay another point covered in biblical theology is how the bible points to christ and as we know there's a whole bunch of foreshadows and prophecies in the bible that ultimately are fulfilled in christ uh namely genesis three fifteen, which talks about the offering the offspring crushing the serpent's head which ultimately uh which ultimately is fulfilled in Christ and also Isaiah 53 the suffering servant and later in the New Testament uh, Jesus tells uh, some of his disciples on the road to Emmaus on Luke 24 verse 44 and he said to them these are the words which I spoke unto you while yet I was with you that all these things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me so in other words he's saying that Everything that has been written in the Old Testament, whether it's the Law of Moses, the Prophets, the Psalms, etc., it, it is ultimately found in me. And when it comes to biblical theology, we get to see how that fleshes out. We get to see it in the original context, what those texts, is, what those texts, those scriptures mean, and then how ultimately the New Testament describes how it's fulfilled in Christ. So that's very important to know. And ultimately, with biblical theology, we also learn of the overarching themes of the Bible, such as creation, fall, covenant, redemption, and glory, which goes to show that the Bible is ultimately one big story. It is God's redemptive story. It is it is it goes to show his, his providential hand above all things and above all people, whether it's at the beginning of time to the end of time, from Genesis to Revelation. Remember, we still have... Revelation, we still have the end to come forth. And when it does happen, it's going to be, it. it's pretty much set in stone because it is in accordance to what God has already said in accordance to his word. Okay, and it also, uh, uh, answers, biblical theology also answers the questions, who are we, what we are here for, and where are we going? All right, so that's definitely, there's definitely lots to cover of biblical theology. And I definitely suggest that everybody do 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 the research because uh, uh on your own time because what i'm giving you today is just an overview okay so in closing the biblical theology is essential because it helps us understand the bible is a unified work as opposed to isolated points of doctrine it helps readers connect the dots as they read through the word it helps us understand context further not just in the immediate context, but how it connects to redemptive history and ultimately recognizes that God is sovereign all throughout history because he is carrying out his redemptive work amongst his people for his glory. Amen. Thank you for listening to the For Your Soul podcast. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. In the next episode, I will continue my Theology Matters series with historical theology. All right, so stay tuned. So be sure to follow me on social media and wherever you get your podcasts. And also you can subscribe to my YouTube channel where I upload every episode as well as clips on the podcast. And if you want to, uh, if you want to,
contribute to the For Your Soul podcast, you can do so at anchor.fm slash for your soul slash support. Until next time, this is the For Your Soul podcast, a podcast for your soul.